When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink, but I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds. I love chic branding and smart water sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Zoe and you're listening to Climbing in Heels. This show is all about celebrating the most extraordinary superwomen who will be sharing their incredible journeys to the top all while staying glamorous. Okay, I love this week's guest so much. We fell in love in Paris just before COVID. We had met each other a few times and she's truthfully one of the most down to earth, coolest girls I've ever met. And I say girl, but she's a woman, but she's a girl, but she's a woman. She's both. Okay, the wonderful Nikki Reed is joining me today and she is such an incredible light and a force. From actor and writer to jewelry designer and entrepreneur, Nikki's work is honestly the most incredible example of how creativity can evolve and change throughout our lives, throughout a never-ending career, multifaceted career. She's the mother of two children. She's married to Ian Summerholder. You may have heard of him. Also, the sweetest, kindest, most down-to-earth guy ever. And she may be my favorite fictitious vampire to grace the screen. And she knows that I love that about her. Fangirl. Nikki had a lot to share today, and I'm so excited to share this episode with all of you. So let's get right into it. I'm surrounded by extraordinary women, as are you, and all doing great, big, amazing things and at the top of their fields, whatever that field may be. But I think what's most important to getting to where we see women winning or where you may feel like you're winning in life, it's that journey to get there that is unique, that is sometimes terrifying, that's sometimes dark and sometimes extraordinary lonely. and lonely and all the things and scary and challenging and pushing you to your limit and also <laughs> the most rewarding when you feel like you've you know you've put on those heels and you've been climbing <laughs> <laughs> and 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 in heels the but metaphor. <laughs> it it is because i feel like the you know I feel like the heels part of this whole thing is really how we all choose to like embrace the powers of being a woman, right? And I think as we all know, those powers can be taken advantage of, they can be disregarded, they can be um, squashed by other women, Um, they can be squashed by men, they can be squashed just in general. By the way, we can squash our own ourselves yeah ourselves which i am so that's guilty really of. the conversation to have too is right. like how right. to manifest and see beyond our own you know limitations that we kind of, that are like self induced mm-hmm. that we you know maybe have been conditioned to think um, or envision and how we can't get beyond that sometimes until we have our own breakthrough a thousand yeah. percent and i think i I mean, I definitely say that very loudly to anybody who will listen. Like, you know, I trip over myself probably the most in my life, right? Like, I'm like, people will be like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And I'll be like, nah, you know. And so I love talking to women who have had their own unique journeys because I think it's so important to share those things. And I think your journey is so incredibly unique. Um, and I, I mean, I'd love to hear, you know, obviously whatever you're comfortable speaking about, of course, but I think to the extent that like, we can understand, like, how did, like, how did you start? You grew up here, right? You grew up in LA. Hmm. I did. (laughs) Oh goodness. Back to the beginning. So, you know, it was when you were sitting there talking about how you trip over yourself sometimes as we all do, I was thinking about 
not only is it so important to be your own um, champion in a sense, but also to surround yourself with people that will champion you, you know, and that is something that I've seen you do so well is surround yourself with women that believe in you as much, if not more sometimes than you can believe in yourself. Definitely more. And, you know, we can talk about why it's so important to have that, you know, female power and presence. Um, Men are wonderful and amazing and so important too, but there's something very specific about like that, that unity with women and you have the coolest and best core group of amazing badass women around you. And I'm like, just so honored that in some small way you consider to me, you consider me in your, you know, orbit. I consider you a lot, you and some of my favorites and Sarah Olson and like all the girls, the best girls, the best women, best girls and women, because we are girls and women. (laughs) And on that note, you were one of the first that really believed in my business. And I want to just take a second here to talk about what it feels like to have somebody um, walk a path, you know, ahead of you and then turn around and extend a hand back to you. And that is what you've done for me. And I just I couldn't go five minutes into this without just sharing how much that that means to me, Um, you know, because as you talk about my you know origin story it's so weird to talk about yourself isn't it um yes. but here we are and <laughs> as you talk about that i can't help but think about um you know i'm entirely self-made if you will i don't know what what you know i don't know how else to phrase that but i didn't have um uh, you know, I've been working very hard for a very long time, putting one foot in front of the other and figuring it out and using, you know, you know, beating down any door that was locked and, you know, using innovation and creativity and thinking outside the box and, you know, chasing um, passion and, um, and inspiration. And, you know, those things sometimes, um, I read something once and I've, I've kind of used it as like the model in my life, which is, you have to sometimes seek out inspiration and seek out passion. It's not like it just lands on your lap and you wake up one day and go, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do with my life. I mean, sometimes you do, but but that's not always built in, right? Sometimes you have to, to put yourself in situations that um, bring forth that creativity or that inspiration or that passion. Um, And it's sort of like the analogy of like my, you know, my brother was born with a very gifted hand as an artist. He's so talented. I mean, he can paint and sketch and draw in ways that I've, you know, I just wasn't born with that hand. Um, So I had to seek out and chase that, (laughs) you know, and here I am. My job is actually sketching and, you know, using that hand to sketch jewelry and design. Um, But I wasn't necessarily born with that. And so, you know, you have to find that. And um, anyway, I am. So the origin story of of being self. Well, no, no, but it's very interesting because, listen, we'll get into it more later, but I think that when you are a creative person, a creative force, that manifests in, in a myriad of ways. And they, they come out at different points in your life. And sometimes you need to do things first to have those kind of come out, you know? And so it's I, also how do we define creativity? Like in this chapter of my life, having left, you know, the only career I had ever known, which was acting and writing but having left that <laughs> you're so sweet. by the way <laughs> the transition into something that was totally unknown and really taking a leap a leap of faith a leap of you know a leap of everything um was so scary and creativity comes in so many different forms and that's what i had to realize is i didn't let go of being an artist i just transitioned that creativity into a new space. Operations can look like creativity, you know, learning spreadsheets and, you know, running your, I mean, all of these things can fall into some bucket that is creatively fulfilling. Yes. And it doesn't all look like one thing. And so I, at one point thought that I was like mourning the, um, or maybe not even mourning because I didn't really ever let it go, but sort of like, um, you know, Saying goodbye. Hesitant to like let go. <laughs> yeah, to like hesitant to, to, to enter into a new chapter. And then I realized that it can actually be even more creatively fulfilling. Mm-hmm. It just comes in a different form. 
Well, I um, think you have more control over it. I, I think you have more control a big over part it. part of it for me. And the older I get, the more of, uh, I think, like willing I am to own that, that yeah. I grew up in a business that dictated everything, right? Yeah. It dictates what you're supposed to look like, mm -hmm. how you're supposed to, you know, behave. And of course, now in 2024, things are a little bit different because, you know, we've seen many movements pass now that um, have been recognized that support, you know, women in a different way, which is yeah. amazing. But, you know, 20 years ago, when I was starting out in this business, there were a lot of things that were different. And yep. You know, even like just going through years of media training and like learning, you know, how to carry yourself and what you should say. And if you, you know, act a certain way, you'll be more likable. And if you play certain roles, then maybe you'll have a better chance at being seen as, you know, a certain kind of human because people can't disassociate you from a character that you play. And so you wanted to be very careful that, you know, I was typecast at a very, very young age because I was playing like all these really bad girls. And then, you know, found myself even in my teenage years trying to defend like, wait, I'm not that girl. I just, I played that girl. But, you know, I, it was really hard for people to disassociate me from the characters I was It's playing. called and being a great actor, by the way. But, but, but it also in interviews and things, you can't, you don't never want to be perceived as being difficult, right? Right. Difficult. <laughs> difficult. Yeah. You don't want to challenge. And I was, um, if anyone, you know, listening is, is followed even, or even anyone on the back end of your podcast, you know, has known me since I was young, um, not being exactly who I, who I am, who I was, who I am, was very, was very difficult for me. I always wanted to show up. I didn't know another way except showing up as my authentic self. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, that got me in trouble if I was challenging, mm -hmm. you know, someone or something or questioning why I, you know, had to, you know, dress a certain way or look a certain way. And, and quite frankly, when it comes down to what you were just saying, which is having more control, I didn't feel like I could really f function um, or fully realize myself or my life if I was in a position where other people got to determine or dictate my level or define my level of success in mm -hmm. whatever that may be, you know, when you work in an industry for a long time, that makes it very clear what success is and what it isn't, right? Yep. Pretty easy to know when you're an actor, how you define success. And I really wanted the challenge of stepping outside of that and saying, okay, I'm going to start over completely. And I'm Which going is terrifying, to no? Terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Um, what if I fail? What if I leave something and, you know, and you're forgotten? And so then how do you step back into that world? Um, you know, what if it's offensive that I said, you know, I'm pausing in this world to go try something new? Um, what if nobody believes in what I believe in in the same way that I do? And, you know, there's so many things that are scary. I also didn't have a conventional um, education, and we can talk about that mm -hmm. too. But I mm -hmm. do, you know, I consider myself a lifelong student, and I was constantly going back to school because I left school early. I had this fear that um, your life would pass by. <laughs> yeah. And, and just that I wouldn't, you know, like not having that level of education, you know, whatever that. Mm -hmm. sort of standard was that I set for myself was something that I was always chasing. And so, you know, it's been a blessing in disguise because I've adopted this mentality of like just being a lifelong student of everything. I will never be a teacher. Um, I Same. will always be a student. I think that that's, you know, I hope that I instill that in my kids too. Like you find something that you're passionate about, keep learning and keep reading and keep, I watched my grandfather who was you know, one of the most celebrated and wonderful doctors, you know, definitely, you know, in this country, but maybe even globally. And I watched, you know, until he was in his 90s, he would sit and research and read and study. And he was a student until the end, even though he was one of the best doctors. And that's kind of how I view everything that I feel passionate about. I want to keep learning. I think it's the healthiest thing to do because I think it's the only way to actually get better at anything. Because if you go, you know, I interviewed this girl um, recently and she had just done a first job out of college for a year. 
And I said, well, how, how come you're ready to leave? She said, I just feel like I know everything now about this. And I literally was like, red flag, red flag. <laughs> because I was like, I don't know. I don't know all of anything about anything. Like, that's not, that's, that's not a possible statement, right? And so I think to your point, the minute you accept that we're still constantly learning, um, I think it's very peaceful, actually. Um, because you keep allowing things to come in and make you better at what you do. And I think for you, it's so interesting because, you know, from the outside, people would say, oh, well, Nikki has clearly mastered this and now she's ready for a next chapter, right? And I think, right? But like, it's funny because it's like you went from acting to like all these other things, as you said, not a, not a, like a formal full education. I like to talk about that very often on the pod because it's a common thread with some of the most extraordinary people I've ever met, male or female, that have not had a traditional education in any way. And I always say like, I, I went through college, but I grew up in college, but as far as college, like if my parents said, you can go to work now, I would have done that. A hundred percent, I would have done that. And I, and I will always stand by that there is no one way to do anything in this life. And I think education, we're seeing more and more with our children. Everyone learns differently. Everybody responds differently. There's neurodiversity. There's this, there's that. That is the beauty of where we are now. And I don't think anyone should ever pass judgment on anyone. And I, the thing that does upset me is that the common thread with many people, I know that they're like, well, I didn't go to college. It's almost like a defense. And yet I think they use life as their school forever. And, and, and we all do. So, I mean, it, you're still learning. You're, I mean, you became a jewelry designer. You're, I've never seen you without a camera in your hand. You have a million different hats that you wear because you're this beautiful, brilliant, creative person. But I think that like with all of these things, now being a parent and, and, and living your life on your terms. I'm, I'm very curious, like when you were coming up, even in, in acting, were women good to you? Like who was, I guess what I'm saying is like, I, I was very challenged by women. I was, I, they, they did not want me to succeed, which is part of why I started climbing in heels because I'm like, Hey, I love women. I have incredible women around me. We can only make women even better by continuing to support them, right? Well, you know what you're doing? You're doing something so extraordinary because then you're breaking a cycle that has existed in your own life, which is all we can ever hope to do. Try to. Which is so wonderful. Um, I laughed when you said uh, camera because actually I'm, I work literally 16 hours a day, but in the middle of the day on Tuesdays, I actually go to a photography class because I'm a student forever. Yes. <laughs> I just said. Yes. And yes. I was realizing when you said that, that I haven't, um, I haven't done my homework from last week's class. <laughs> and I'm like such a tight. I didn't say you had to be a good class. student, by the way. I didn't say you had to be a good I student. I am though. I am. I like I'm terrible. I, I'm I a am. terrible student. So I wait, just need to make sure that everything is okay here. Um, so I have to say, I had a very um, different experience to what you're describing. And I also think that we are, we create our own reality. And that's kind of the message that I always like to think about and put out there, which is um, we also can choose what we want to see. And you're doing a beautiful job of changing the narrative right now from what maybe you experienced. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, um, you know, in a very sort of non-traditional uh, scenario where I had um, my mother and then, and my mother has supported me in everything I've wanted to do since the beginning and, you know, yes. believed in me, you know, definitely more than I've believed in myself. And and then a lot of women around her that kind of stepped in in this sort of, I don't know, like motherly, sisterly, you know, like communey type yeah. of way of raising kids where my mm -hmm. mom had best friends around her that really, she was a single mom. And so all those women kind of came in 
to, you know, mother in a sense. Um, and then I was really fortunate to have some very strong, very intelligent, very driven women around me that, you know, even it was even if it was a little bit unconventional, like what the dynamics were, um, you know, like, for example, um, Catherine Hardwick, who um, at one point was my father's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we continued a relationship long after they broke up. And then her and I, you know, we wrote 13 together and she directed 13. And so that is an example of like, just strong, amazing, intelligent women around me that really uh, gave me the opportunity to see things through a different lens, took me to museums or to, you know, my mom was working full time and raising two kids. And so, so it takes hard. a village it's and so that hard. village, it's so hard. so hard and that village. So I also think it's like kind of what we choose to see in a sense, because I could, I could probably give a thousand examples if I, you know, wanted to to think about that of, you know, things that maybe I had seen just growing up in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, there were always conversations around in media, you know, let's say about women being pitted against each uh -huh. other. But I literally told myself in my brain that I cannot fuel that narrative. I don't want to fuel so that narrative. Smart. I want to see that people, that women are good to each mm -hmm. other. And I want, I want to not only surround myself with that, but create that reality. So I think we can do that um, and we can be that example for our children and for, you know, our friends. And we just have to continue showing up. Like when I launched Buy You With Love, mm -hmm. not to talk about business, but just for oh, a quick I want to talk about business. I, the, the whole, obviously I love, you know, what we create, but also there was a whole part of that mission. Like we are a mission driven business that was about supporting other female makers and yep. female founders in the same way that you, you know, took me under your wing and said, Hey, I want to give you a really incredible opportunity because yep. this is what we do within my company. And yep. we have those chances every single day with women, whether it's something as big as like what you have done or, you know, maybe what I'm doing with different, you know, cross pollination with different female founders or something as small as just picking up the phone, you know, to a woman in your life who you love that might need, you know, that might need you for a minute that mm -hmm. might need your support or your ear or your presence yeah. or whatever. So anyway, <laughs> not no. to like wax poetic on that, but no, we create it's, it's our true. reality. But I think, but I, I want to touch on that because I actually think that that's a very important point for, for all of us is sort of like, it's like, it's not like blinders or earmuffs. It's sort of like, no, no, no. I'm actually like not spending time on this negativity that's trying to be thrown at me. I'm not engaging in that. And I'm actually just going to take the, the good, right? Because I think that's important. And I think we can't control sort of what happens to us. We can only control how we deal with it and how we choose to take it in, right? We can also control what we let into our field. So I, I would even say that we could expand on that and say, we can't control what happens, right. but we maybe can control what happens to us by virtue of like what we choose to let into our field, right? Yeah. Like we have a conscious choice to not let certain things come through. Like silly example, but you know, I know that I've seen you talk a little bit about this on social media, just like sometimes that that world can be sort of like a spiral of, you know, all kinds of things, mm -hmm. right? whether it's chatter or gossip or yeah. negativity yeah. or this or that, we get to choose how we participate in that space. And we also get to choose what we let in. So once I had that switch that flipped, mm -hmm. flipped that switch. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> once I had that like epiphany, which was, gosh, I mean, you know, I was coming out of like, you know, some of the, you know, most like pop culture-y, you know, films, I guess, of our lifetime. Yeah. Twilight, also the casual. Of can, can, can I throw that? Can I throw the Twilight bomb? I mean, can I just like that? I think maybe one of the biggest film phenomenon, ph phenomenons in like 
pop culture history, I think. I mean, I'm sure it's broken. I don't know, actually, but I can make an assumption that it's broken every pop culture record in in history. I don't even know how you come out of that. I don't even, the thing is like, I think with things like that, it's a little bit like it goes back to like Beatlemania, right? Or like, you know, when I first started, I worked with like the Backstreet Boys and Britney and like, there was that like insanity of like, and I think it's, it's interesting that I think without question, people that come out of those experiences, I think you almost, while grateful, I think, I think crave peace <laughs> a little bit, right? I mean, like peace and maybe privacy, but, but it, it's not without gratitude, I guess. I think it's like you take from these experiences, right? Like how do you, because I feel like now when I think of you, I think of peace. I think of someone who is living this, I don't want to say fairy tale because fairy tale seems not real. I think you live a very, very real life. And I think also because I know you personally, you wouldn't have it any other way. But to me, you seem so peaceful, calm, and wise. But I think part of that comes from so much experience and wisdom of like trial and error within yourself, if that makes sense. (laughs) I don't want to burst the bubble of all the amazing things you just said, but... But I'm so not at peace. No, just... example of, yeah. <laughs> this is such an example, too, of like where like our perception, too, of <laughs> my gosh, I well, I don't I don't share a lot of like yes, personal, personal you are very things. Private. Yes, I'm very private. And so because of that, you know, we let people in on a side of ourselves that I mean, not to get too real here, but it's just yeah. like who I am, yeah. but we let people in on a side of ourselves that we feel connected to, but also a side of ourselves that we aspire to lean into and do, sure. you know, and the truth of the matter is my life is so chaotic that 100. I crave that piece uh-huh. and that like, and I want to manifest that and call it in. And so in those moments where I have that tranquility or that clarity or that peace, I maybe share mm-hmm you know, snippets of that. But like, I always laugh thinking about what life actually looks like, like my office right now. Well, I guess it looks pretty peaceful behind me because you can't (laughs) see anything going on. But, but, you know, I work 16 hours a day. I'm working seven days a week. I'm in the grind. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm running two companies. I mean, I'm running one company and I'm a co-founder of another, which is, you know, essentially, um, you know, you're in the grind, even if I'm not running it. Oh, it's brutal. I'm in the grind. Brutal good, but still brutal. (laughs) Yeah. And then I work with other companies and I have other jobs because I don't pay, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you're not paying yourself through your companies. And so then you wake up one day and you go, wait a second, I've got six Uh jobs I'm juggling and I didn't even learn how to juggle. So like, how do I do this? (laughs) And then I do a really good job sometimes of saying, that's it. I need a moment. I'm going to turn off my phone. Mm-hmm. I don't care that I've got 7,000 emails that are coming in because I don't like the feeling of I have to catch up when I wake up in the morning and catch up when I go to sleep at night. We're never caught up. Like I hate the hamster wheel and I hate feeling anxious. Yep. And um, so then I just sort of like wash my hands and say, that's it. I'm shutting down for a second. Um, okay. And those are the moments that maybe you see because I'm not necessarily like putting the grind out there. But, you know, I'm so in the grind and I crave that that piece um now I feel it though I feel it in your writing though I feel it I do because here's the thing this is how I perceive it like if I didn't know you what I would perceive is she's very private but she's basically telling us very calmly her life is mental everyone's sick in the house she's been (laughs) in a sick grind for three weeks she's she's juggling multiple businesses that she's trying to build or investing in also trying to live out her passions, also trying to be a good wife, also trying to be good to herself. But then you find those moments because I actually think that there is a gift in being able to stop because, because that is to me has always been the absolute biggest challenge. And then when I stop, it's because I got really sick or like, you know, something happened. And so I think it's sort of like, I know what you're doing because I live what you're doing. And so I get it. But at the same time, I think you've been able to carve out in your life the you time for, because you know that for your mental and physical health and as a mother, 
we have to do that, right? Like we have to do. Did that. you get really sick? I did. In um just uh just before I had my first son, <clears throat> I I was working twenty hours a day, seven days a week for what fifteen years straight without a break, no weekends, no whatever. Missed everything important. And then I got vertigo, very, very serious vertigo for like a full year. Like I couldn't drive a car. I had vertigo this year for four months. So you know. Yeah. It's I do. That's I was wondering what you went through. Yeah, you know what the body (laughs) So there's a reason why statistically women get autoimmune diseases at a far greater rate than men do. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why, you know, so the body the body talks, Uh right? Loudly. And we think about like disease. Well, it kind of starts as a whisper. Yes. And we don't listen. No. And it starts by saying like, you know, hey. Um, Chill. You know, you, you've been getting, you know, colds a little bit more frequently or maybe you've got some insomnia or that's weird. You've got this like lower back pain and you can't put your finger on exactly what it is or digestive problems mm-hmm. or whatever it is. The body starts to whisper. And then we don't listen, right? That's part of it. Mm -hmm. And then it gets louder and then it gets louder. And then you wake up one day with debilitating vertigo as you did for a year and you don't know where to turn. And it's the most humbling thing to be brought to your knees, literally, literally, with no option except to listen. Yep. And, you know, I've been in that moment. So it's really like the, it's very, um, the timing right now is really, (laughs) (laughs) it's not lost on me. No, (laughs) and it debilitates you. (laughs) Yeah, where I go, how how much can you grind? How much can you be in it? How do we set women up in this society to have, you know, it's interesting, like you look at the evolution of, you know, the woman's journey in society and the home and how that's been sort of redefined um, and how we went from one end of, you know, this pendulum to the other with, um, you know, working and careers and being career driven and all that's amazing. And then you have this burning desire to be fully career driven and also be a fully devoted parent and a fully devoted partner. And you start looking at all the hats you're wearing. And then the thing that's happened is that we've really glorified that because no one has wanted to kind of like stand up and go, wait a sec, but is this how, like, are we healthy also (laughs) at the same time? Because it, if, of course it feels good to be able to do it all. And in many ways, women are sort of built and designed to, um, you know, I mean, Keep it coming. We, birth, damn it. <laughs> that, by the way, and yeah, it upset. Human, right? Exactly. And exactly. so we're designed sometimes to be able to just keep things together, that keep the home together, keep the, you know, kids are sick for, you know, they're coming to mama and mm-hmm. you're sick, you're still a mama uh-huh. and you're still showing up to work and you're still. So at some point, I do hope that the conversation shifts to just a gentle landing place for women to say, hey, can I do it all? And is it okay if I can't, right. you know, like, yes. where, do, where does that land? Does it have to be when we wake up with, you know, an autoimmune disease yeah. or a debilitating vertigo yeah. or whatever it may be? So it was interesting because I was calling all of my doctors and granted I was, you know, um, like three months, two, three months postpartum when my vertigo started and it was like a massive hormone shift anyway. So they were trying to figure out, you know, what it was, but I was having my blood drawn and they're like, but your hormones are pretty balanced. And how are you feeling otherwise? And I'm like, well, is that a real question? Because there's a lot going on right now. (laughs) That's a real loaded question. I didn't, uh, I didn't take off work. Um, You know, in my first, I was like, okay, I can really do this. And so I don't, I don't feel like I need to. So with my second, I had that, you know, humbling moment of being like, well, what is going on in our country where we're not setting up women for success by giving them, you know, the paid leave that they deserve and the support system that they deserve. And we don't set them up with, you know, um, a nutrition, you know, nutritional foundation okay. or, you know, free and paid for doula care or postpartum care or any support system at all, actually. <laughs> Babe, it's and- the wild west for us. <laughs> 
There we just it's, away. Yeah, I mean, you know, hello, <laughs> United States of America. We have a lot to improve in this area. Like, <laughs> yes. how are we having this conversation when you look at other countries that give people six months, both partners, by the way, mother and father, of paid time off and a support system and access to a midwife or a doula to help you transition into what is not only the most important journey of, you know, your lifetime or one of, let's say, I consider it to be the most important journey in my lifetime. But not only that, we're not thinking about the societies that we're building as a result of not having that care. When you have a mother that doesn't have that support, that obviously is trickled down into whether it's through literally the levels of cortisol in her body Mm -hmm. that's being transferred through breast milk into your baby, or whether it's just the sort of emotional fragility And that, you know, and women going back to work and, you know, babies, you know, not having that, you know, the, the, the time that they deserve with their mother and mothers not having the time they deserve with their babies. Anyway, I just feel like there's so much to be said about ambition and also about the, you know, that side of things and how much we put on our plates and how much is expected of us as women. But then at the same time, just looking at, you know, this country and society and how we have not been able to set women up for success in their journey into motherhood and then, you know, the result of that. When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life and sometimes all that decision making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for many, many years and truly love its pure crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with smart water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging, and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart Water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of Smart Water, and the sports cup is great for their very very active days. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. My dad works in B2B marketing, but I never really knew what that meant. Then one day my dad came by my school for career day and told everyone in my class he was a big MQL man. Then he just kept saying things like, the more MQLs, the better, over and over. My friends still laugh at me to this day. I think it means marketing qualified lead. One thing's for sure. I'll be known as the MQL man's kid for the rest of my days. Why couldn't you just be a fireman or a lawyer? Why? You ruined my life, Dad. Not everyone gets B2B, but LinkedIn has the people who do. And with ads on LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people based on job title, industry, likelihood to buy, and more. Start converting your B2B audience into high-quality leads today. We'll even give you $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash customer to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash customer. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So... Buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. 
When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with smart water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging and smart water sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smartwater even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of Smartwater and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smartwater is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smartwater is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning every morning is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with smart water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging and smart water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of smart water and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. And and I think, I you know, and it's hard to say because I think some people try to give us grace and we don't take it. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's both. Like, I think, I think there's, I think there's a guilt that we carry about like, oh, no, no, I got this. I got this. No, 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 I can do both. I can, I can totally do both. And then to your point, it's societal it's like why at what point do we feel it's okay to say okay guys we actually can't do it all right like and is that okay too because uh, my friend very successful friend who founded Net-A-Porte like literally she's one of my she's like a magical human being an incredible mother and all the things and you know she has since like sold it 10 years ago and the whole thing but has gone on to do really big things but she said to me once, like, is it okay if we just say we can't do it all? Because I actually think that's okay. Why, why is it okay that men don't have to do it all, but we have to choose to do it all or not have a career or not have kids? Or is it okay to yield on one one day and one another day? You know, and we had this real conversation about it. And it was really fascinating to me because she's one of my greatest like mentors, right? And so it's, it's, you know, there's those people in your life where you fall on words, right? You fall on what they say. And the way she said it was so like matter of fact, but yet felt like, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know. I, no, we, no, wait, we do have to do it all. What are you talking about? Like we, like, you know? And so I think it's to That's the conditioning. That's the conditioning. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah. I, I, I think what's important now is that we can navigate our paths to not just what makes us happy and fulfilled, 
that we live whatever our measure of success is, right? But that you stay at this point, because I consider you to be in phase two or phase three. God only knows. You've had a lot of phases. I don't, I don't know. I'm in phase God. I don't know what phase I'm in either, by the way. But <laughs> you still feel like you touch all the things, right? But but I feel like you've had, to me, you, ha- you have so much wisdom for such a young person. Like you, you feel like you've lived a bunch of lives, but I also feel as you said, you're still a student and you're very humble and very gracious. But at the same time, I feel like you're very clear on what's important and drives you the most in your life. And obviously we know that's kids and family, but you are doing what makes you happy now, right? And so I think you're creating businesses and supporting businesses that you so firmly believe in, right? And But that does not protect you from the insanity of being an entrepreneur and it's um you know I want to talk about that for a second because I always like to to sort of ask like what are the things because again there are common threads with entrepreneurs what are the things that scare you the most in your work and what are the things that sort of excite you the most you know like what what are the things that you're like you go to sleep like what if like I don't this isn't working I'm not sure people are understanding this I'm not like or aren't there those things <laughs> that's the thing um <laughs> well I you know I guess when you have your head down and you're in the work um I try so very hard to not let fear um kind of like dictate the path because mm-hmm. you almost have to like be blinded to it a little bit just so that you can be crazy enough to continue to believe in your dreams. Right. Totally. But, um, you know, with, with Bayou, for example, um, so I self fund the company. I've never taken a dollar, um, of outside money and that might seem like an easy thing to do if maybe somebody just assumes you have resources, but let me just say like, I, you know, I have worked very, 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 very hard and whatever you see online, uh, you know, when you look at someone's net worth is not true. I don't know if anyone knows that, but those numbers are all just fabricated on Google. It's the most so, ridiculous thing. The you know, most ridiculous yes. thing. Yes. Like you can Google, what is someone's net worth? And it says some <laughs> weird number that you go, wow, I wish that were, I don't even know what you're talking yes. about. Um, so I work. And when I work and I get paid from jobs, I self fund that money then funds my business. And, um, you know, I have to balance that, right? Because I'm also responsible for a lot. I Mm -hmm. have a life that I pay for. And I also, um, you know, I take care of and help, of course, you know, family and got two children. And so anyway, there's a lot of pressure. And I suppose that could be one fear that continues to pop up is, sure. you know, making sure that you're managing money properly as a woman, mm-hmm. because also another thing, like I'm not one to give unsolicited advice, but I will just say right here that as a woman, if there's one skill, I wish that, you know, someone had just instilled in me at a young age, it's Same. managing money. And I had, Same. you know, I learned that and I learned it on my own. Um, but I learned it by being taken advantage of by not knowing how to read, uh, you know, bank statements and ledgers and accounts and QuickBooks and not knowing how to ask the questions or trusting, you know, trusting people to help me um, do things that, you know, I should have done myself. And so I learned, I would say I was 15 years old when I learned that lesson uh, the hard way. And so that's one thing for sure. So that's a fear. Um, you know, I am, I am the founder and also the CEO of my business. And so I'm making a lot of big decisions. Buy you with love. Sure that I am buy you plug, with plug. love. Plug, plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and um, now Ian and I have launched the Absorption Company, which I am so very excited about. And um, I want to talk about that. I want to sure. talk about that. Well, first, sure, first rewind for one second. So buy you with love in case someone listening does not know about it. It is a, well, I would like you to explain actually, cause I don't want to speak sure. about it. So we were the first jewelry company to my knowledge. That's my disclaimer, but the first jewelry company <laughs> to use 
um, 100% recycled gold from recovered technology through our partnership with Dell, Dell Computers, to make um, fine jewelry. So right now, uh, we really specialize um, on bridal and engagement. That's sort of our, you know, our our passion area, if you will. But um, you know, we have over 300 pieces to choose from, and it's certainly not all bridal right now on the site alone. And we also have a really nice selection of curated products from other female founders and makers that's outside of the jewelry space. Um, just because of what we spoke about earlier, I really believe in cross-pollinating and using any platform that I have, if you will, whatever you want to call that thing that we've all been working so hard to build um, to support other, other women in their work. So um, and it's gorgeous. We use diamonds that are grown with solar energy or hydropowered diamonds. Um, we we offer the option to all of our customers and clients, um, and using repurposed and recycled um, metals. So that is by you with love, and I will tell you the level of um, joy and inspiration and creativity being a part of a business that is quite literally involved in the you know. The, the moment of like most potent and pure love. It's such a joy to work with people, with our clients who come to us at this amazing moment in their life where they're about to get married and you're a part of that joy and you're a part of people want to wear things that are, are, are a reflection of their morals and their ethos and by you you know, when you're considering the planet and what you wear and that becomes about, you know, that's part of your story, people no longer want to just wear things. They want to wear things that they're proud of, that are a reflection of who they are, that they want to talk about in front of their future children that they're, you know, dreaming about at that, you know, at that table. And I, it's just, it's, it's really, um, I'm so proud of our of our little company and I love being a small business and I love the women on our team. We have an amazing team of gosh 10 now and that's such an incredible feeling too to be a part of their story. So that is by you with love. Thanks for asking because you <laughs> have so been good. a big supporter and I put on all my sparkles for you today. <laughs> it's so good. Don't think I haven't been staring at your necklace the whole time by the way. I um, don't even because I've got on some sparkles. I've got these for you. These are oh. our new round pieces Ooh, that I thought I you would love. That. I love the idea of like stacking things and being able to kind of like add to the story, you know? And so that's what this new crown collection is all about is like, you can keep adding to your story, you know? It's gorgeous. It's getting higher and higher uh -huh. and higher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty soon I see, I see you and you're like, it's weird. It's yeah, coming off. I can't bend my finger anymore. I can't. Okay. So absorption. So tell me about that because I, I recently got absorption and there was no note and no anything. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? It's amazing. I had no idea. And then I found out a couple of days ago it was yours. And I was like, well, that makes perfect sense. Oh um, no, that was a mistake. I'm well, so sorry about I, that. Listen, it probably well fell here. Off. I'll tell you about it here. So <laughs> here it comes. Um, okay, so the absorption company. Um, in a nutshell, here we go. We have a piece of patented technology that takes lipophilic material and okay. turns it into a water soluble powder, and I'll explain that in a second. Okay. And in the process of that the size of these nanometric of these particles are reduced to nanometric particles and when you reduce the size of a particle you actually increase the surface area making it 500 percent more bioavailable so let's talk about that for a second i have been obsessed with absorption and bioavailability and bioaccessibility for years because i Casual. like you and what you were talking about <laughs> um Yes, what, I obsess over nano, what do you call it? <laughs> nano bias. <laughs> Nanometric particles? Nanometric particles. I think about well, them every night, actually. But tell me. Tell I, was, me. <laughs> I was, you know, going through a sort of mystery illness for a long time and was the, I was the sort of person that the marketplace targets for supplements, right? Like right. I bought everything sure. under the sun sure. and nothing worked. And I was chasing and chasing solutions 
for this sort of mystery illness that I had been experiencing for over three years and wow. nothing was working. And wow. so, you know, when we came across this technology and our co-founders that we partnered with that own this technology, um, this was the first aha moment for me where I went, we need we need people to absorb what they take. And I don't know if you know this, but you pee out over 80% of your supplements that you oh, take. Oh, yeah. And sure. that is actually, um, it's actually higher than that. So that's a sort of conservative number. Um, and that was shocking to me. And I was like, wait a second. So I'm being marketed to all day long because I'm desperate to find a solution and none of it is working. Right. Okay, then we're going to create it. And so now we have this amazing opportunity to take, um, you know, to actually build out through this, through our, our specific ingredient list and using this proprietary technology to create and increase this, this increased bioavailability, which is 5X, it's 500% more bioaccessible. Wow. Um, this, is, this is the solution. And I just, I believe that people deserve to feel good. I want to feel it good. It feels so simple, and, but yet it's really not. It's really not simple. I mean, we're being sold things all day long that don't work. And really, that's frustrating to me. Like, I work hard and I want the money that I am spending on things to work. <laughs> I want it and to work. And they're so expensive, by the way. Like, even In just general, vitamins. supplements are. <laughs> yes. Right. So yes. the beauty of like, like, let's take, for example, I mean, I have stuff on my desk because I already have, you know, things out. So let's just open like, well, I'm drinking Calm right now, by the way, but Restore, <laughs> I got which is like, kids. you know, if you're looking at like a hydration, so like here's our Restore, mm -hmm. there you go. So if you're looking at like what would be in a, a typical, you know, hydration stick and you're thinking about, okay, electrolytes and, you know, magnesium, and then you're looking at our Restore and you've got, you know, uh, Capsoil vitamin C. So that's our technology that that capsule is mm -hmm. our proprietary technology. And then you've got folate. So you've got B vitamins, mm -hmm. you've got methylcobalamin, you've got niacin, you've got magnesium, you have, of course, sodium, potassium, but then you have things like alpha GPC, which is good for cognitive function. And you have liposomal glutathione and CoQ10. And you're thinking about this. And in order to put this packet together, I would have to buy a liquid IV. And then I would have to buy a uh, you know, like a liposomal vitamin C packet. Well, let's talk about that in one second and, and what that is. Um, you would have to put together 10 packets into one and you'd be spending $15 a stick. Who can afford to do that? So we've created, it's like an all in one, all of our supplements are actually multi-use case. So it's not just, um, okay, great. Take this and you're getting a vitamin C boost. We wanted these to be, you know, for multi-use case. So that is the absorption company. That's and, so you know, exciting. liposomal. Have you ever taken or tried to give your kids like liposomal glutathione or anything? No. It's like that. It's sort of like jet, like kind of, so it's bound to a fat. So that's what that lipophilic. Have you ever like squeezed a goopy Have you listened into to water? yourself? Have you listened to yourself? Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, Nikki has just become a full doctor. She has she has gone from acting to jewelry designer to uh, now. I, I don't want to call you a doctor because I know you're going to get all defensive about that. But I feel like um, you are you are a, a health and wellness authority. Oh, um, who is, I don't know that I can wear that crown. I'm not, I'm going to give it but to I'm you. Definitely very I'm climbing in heels. It. I'm giving you the crown. Okay. Cause this is <laughs> my pod till, and I can crown you. <laughs> I, I say it's till three o'clock in the morning, still reading medical journals. And I have for the last decade and it's really my passion area. That is true, but I don't know that I'm an, uh, you know, a authoritative figure. Um, or a teacher because I'm a student forever. Um, but just going on that really quickly, it's almost impossible to get those things even into our children because, and, and even for ourselves, like to take liposomal um, supplements, it comes in a goo and then you put it in the bottom of your, you know, it goes into water and then you kind of have to take it like a shot and it's sort of like swallowing like an egg yolk. Like you just have to like get it down. You are talking so to the person about, who would never do that. Exactly, which is why you love these because we can take, that lipophilic material and we can actually turn it into a water soluble powder. So I'm just going to, I mean, you need a lot more water than this, but just to give you an example. So like you open a pack and then you pour, like it's a powder, right? Okay. And then you, mix you stir, which I don't have a spoon or anything. Can right you like blend it with ice and make it like a frozen thingy? 
you can, but it's delicious without that because I was going to ask you, you does this to, taste good? Because that's all if that matters you want to a me. Mock, if you wanted a mocktail out of this, my favorite thing is like you could put like a little sparkling water and a sprig of mint on top and you've right. got a mocktail and it's delicious, but it's delicious without it. Can like you water, pour like some vodka like in it? <laughs> sure, if you want to. <laughs> If you want to go there, you can. You totally use this can. with like gin or like some champagne or like. You look totally can. Be like a nice mimosa, I'm so I feel like. Like I'm drinking these. I am so addicted. I. It's one thing to make something that you believe in. And then it's another thing to make something that you believe in that's also just so damn good. That you actually <laughs> just like want to drink it. Because I yes. actually would love it. I actually would love it. And so Can I'm going to do some? whatever Can you tell me. Right now? Where is it? Well, is I, it in your house? I, it's in my house. But I can't. Okay. if I leave, then I can't talk to you. But when, I, can't when, come back. Okay. But when, but when we're done. <laughs> when we're done. No, I drink Are tea. Are you a coffee drinker? Tea. Okay. So tea. I'm not. I gave up all caffeine. Um, oh, Jesus. And coffee five years ago because I was tired of like the the crash I was like on five cups a day and who oh, wants geez. to do that right and then I went to really strong tea and then that's I what like, I do I'm just replacing one thing sure. with another and sure so but but mine is the acid love. reflux when you do tea instead of coffee it's better okay then stomach. today you're gonna take the energy okay. yeah that, I mean Fair. that is true although we can talk about coffee quality and why it feels so acidic in your body yeah. but um, if you take the energy supplement today, I want immediate feedback from you because okay. you will not have a spike and a crash because it's a balanced profile. So you have nanometric caffeine and then you have natural caffeine from, um, from, uh, uh, so I can have these every day. Green I coffee beans. Sorry. I was having a brain fart, but <laughs> you can also like, look at this whole profile of like balancing this out where you've got like even tryptophan. That's like my favorite part of our caffeine of our, um, energy supplements that you've got caffeine and tryptophan. So you're sort of like in this coasting space, you know, what tryptophan is. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you yeah. sleepy. So, so that's allegedly, the that's, that, the that's the thing they talk like, about on Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, right. Yeah. That's where you hear that. It's true, but it's, it's actually just, it has a calming property. So you're balancing out your caffeine with your right. calming properties. And it makes this like, I'm telling you, Rach, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Every, when you launch a company and it's, you know, there's a, a public figure component to mm -hmm. it, maybe you expect there to be just sort of some kind of, I don't know, just Bullshit. the squeaky wheel. <laughs> it, oh, no. Well, yeah, maybe that too. That's funny that you say that. But I was saying, yes. But I was saying, um, although Ian and I are like, so the real deal in this Oh, please. That, you don't, I, Listen, I'll take like anything the... you tell me to take. Anything you or Ian tells me to buy or take or I will do it because you're the healthiest looking person. Your skin is dewy. You're all glowy. You like ride horses in a field. You like do all these things that are in nature. And like, to me, you are this very real you are living authenticity of your brand and all the things that you stand behind and support um and I think listen for better or for worse I think that's the thing about building a brand right it has to be true to you right so for all the ridiculousness of myself it's like I am who I am right like so this new mob wife thing I'm like mob wife why is this getting a title now like I've been dressing this crazy for my whole life I'm so confused but okay I'm here for it but this mob wife is totally going to be done with this podcast and go drink restore or whichever one you tell me to drink and then I'm going to text you and be like I'm going for a hike now because I feel like a new person. I believe whatever you tell me. I do because I also don't think you'd ever lie about anything to save your life. So so there's that. I mean, it is <laughs> of all the things that get sort of thrown, you know, in the space of like, can you endorse this or right. can you? And the answer nine times out of 10, honestly, is no from me. Like any of the, any of the um, sort of brand, you know, deals yeah, that you yeah, might totally. see yep. are all things that these are products that I actually, and Ab Absorb is my company. So that's not what I'm referring to, but I'm saying anything else you ever yes. see me share. Post, yes. It's because I've actually found that brand or that company. I'm already using them, yep. researching, then using, and then I'm reaching out to the company and saying, hi, I'm, I'm a customer. 
do you want to work together? Yeah. That's how that goes. It's not totally. the other way around. Like right. I'm never sitting there going, sure, why don't you pay me to talk about something? It just, that's not how I, I can do business because genuinely in this space, especially in the health and wellness space, this is like my, this is my whole area of passion. Yeah. <laughs> I, As you I can probably just, tell. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, it, uh, you know, my team makes fun of me. It's like if someone says like, oh, how would you wear this? And somehow or another, like 40 minutes later, I, I have mm. an answer of the, because it's like what it's, it's sort of, you're not thinking it's, it's what comes out of your head and your soul because it's what you yeah. know and, and, and really want to share with other people and believe in so much. Right. I mean, yeah. And it goes back to what you were talking about a second ago too, just with like how, how to build a business and areas of education and all these things and how, what that intersection is. Firstly, I think that we, the best and most successful businesses come from a place from a real story. Yeah. And when you are living and breathing that story and then you create something out of the necessity from that story, yep. from your, your life journey yep. or that area of passion, then there's bound to be other people that are experiencing the need or the want for that too, because exactly it's your right. real story and humans all have very similar stories it's every true. life. It's true. We're all having the same experience with different circumstances, you know, in different areas, but it's the human journey. So there's that. And then also just back to education for a second, Child-led learning is so beautiful because, you know, we're now in a society where we've put everybody into this kind of like cookie cutter mold and box, right? Yep. The same curriculum here. Every child has to learn at the same pace, Hate learn it. the same curriculum, yep. and then what? Become the same human? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know how everybody has a different way of experiencing and learning in that sense. And so child-led learning is so beautiful because I've been thinking about this a lot lately, which is like, like Mozart, like how do you think Mozart would have done if we had like decided that there was like standardized learning and curriculum or Albert Einstein, any of them? Yes. Einstein, we, we, people get to become their genius and realize their genius when we as parents or friends or, you know, or, you know, in the, in our communities see that there is an area of passion and then we allow people to lean into that yep. and we have to do that with our kids and we have to do that with our friends and we have to do that you know just I think that that's a really important thing because you know we're born with whatever our yes. maybe our gifts are yes and then we have to nurture those gifts and maybe that person that has that gift is never going to um you know like excel in like science literature because yes. they yes. yeah because yes. their brain is in a in a you know they were meant to be you know a structural engineer <laughs> yeah. and yeah. we have to figure out how to recognize that and then give them the gift of that support i agree i mean it's my it's my greatest wish as i've been raising two kids now 10 and almost 13 that all of this country and beyond starts to recognize that every child is gifted and every child has a superpower. And that's not how we grew up. We grew up in this, like you learn math at this, at this age, you learn this, this, this is what you learn in fourth grade. This is what you learn. It's the most insane archaic system. And that is not reality. And I think we're seeing, and again, it goes back to the pandemic of like seeing what our kids actually are, right? Because we had them at home for learning. And I think that, oh, yeah, hope, that's right. that's you know, and so I think that as adults, we can navigate our path now, right? But as kids, yeah. you have people navigating it for you. So I think it's now up to you us. You have a system also navigating it for you. Yes. Not just yeah. people, but a system. A hundred percent. But I, I think that you've now in your different phases and in your life now, I I want to know, I think, what, like, what are you most excited about now? And like, what, like, what's next for Nikki? Although you have 12 businesses. So like, I feel like what, like, I feel like now you have to just like, because you're so impressive and you're so real deal and you're all the good things, but you also are doing the juggles. So I think, you know, what's like, 
what is sort of the thing that is you're like okay this is this is giving me total happiness and peace now and this is what I'm excited for going forward or do you just try and live in this minute and be like I'm freaking now like I don't know this is this is what's happening right now and tomorrow we'll see I think it's a combo of both. I'm definitely in, I'm living in the moment, yeah, you know, as um, every second that goes by, you know, things shift and change and I'm learning to be, you know, to surrender to that. <laughs> and that's the greatest oh, lesson of life is mm-hmm. surrendering to the flow, right? Um, but I think what I'm most excited about right now is honestly building, building businesses that are good for the world, that are good for people that can yeah. hopefully you know, um, have impact, attract. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Have, yes. Building businesses with impact. Which and you they know, are. we talk about that, you know, um, triple bottom line, you know, people, planet and profit and mm-hmm. kind of in that order, right. It's like building businesses that, that encourage a better society, better individuals, better homes, um, and doing them in a way that's the least harmful to the environment that we possibly can. And then hopefully at the end of it all, being able to support your, you know, support your family through it. But like live. that is, yes. you, you have to live, but like yes. people, planet, and then profit. Mm-hmm. And, and I really just like, I've got, did you make There's that so, up? I'm really in a, um, no, I don't I feel think like you so. might have. That's like Googleable. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I think I borrowed that for, I definitely borrowed it's that. It's a good one. Um, it's a good one. But you know, I, that is all that I, that I c- could hope for, um, is to be a part of something that maybe, ha- you know, is able to impact society and, and, and move, you know, move people in, in a different way. Well, you're doing it. Than I was before. It worked for me. It totally worked for me. Um, I think we we'll spend more time together. Look at all these I showering man compliments. No, but I mean it. It's I mean it. I mean I it because I wouldn't have you on if I didn't. Team. I think you are as real as they come. I just love and adore you, and I'll take anything you tell me to. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear you text anything me you tell an me to. And call me? Yeah. Actually, I swear, I'm literally going to do that right now because I could really okay. use a boost. I did not sleep last night. Okay. I want you to take the energy and I want you to write me in 30 minutes. I am. I, am. I love you madly. Give me in a hug and a kiss, kiss for me. It's that time in the show when I answer two listener questions. So let's see what we have today. Okay, what app on your phone do you spend the most time on? Ooh, good question. (laughs) I'm embarrassed. Instacart, Amazon, honestly, with my kids, StockX and Goat. Um, Oh, my God. I have so many apps. Waze, Photos, uh, Starbucks, (laughs) and then Goop for dinner. Okay. Hope that answers the question. Can't pick just one. What shows are you looking forward to seeing from Paris Fashion Week? Oh, so many. Always Jean-Baptiste Valley is always a favorite. Valentino, Chanel, so many, honestly. But those are probably some of my top three, I would say. Okay, so don't forget to submit your questions for next week's episode. All you have to do is DM us your questions to at Climbing Heels Pod on Instagram, and I may just answer your question. Thank you so much to my friend Nikki for being on the pod today. She is so extraordinary. She's so incredibly positive, but she's also vulnerable and she's also real. But I would say that she has really tackled so many things in her life that she probably was very apprehensive about And I think it's really difficult, especially as a woman, to pivot from being something so public and so recognized and so endeared by so many people and going from a very, very public career to something that is also incredibly creative, but as she talks about, is a continuous student of her life and all the things she does in it at this point. Everything from being a mom, a CEO, a founder, an entrepreneur, and all of the fears 
and challenges and excitement that comes with it. But I will say that one thing I will always stand behind with very successful women is that you have to be authentic. You have to be authentic to who you are, to what your brand is, to what you stand for, and sort of live, eat, and breathe. But Nikki's amazing. I'm so impressed with her. I could have spoken to her for hours and hours and hours. I hope you loved this episode as much as I did. And check out Nikki's incredibly beautiful jewelry line, Buy You With Love, and now her latest venture, Absorb, which I will be drinking in the next 20 minutes. And don't forget to write a review wherever you get your podcasts. I love reading them. And while you're at it, follow me on at Rachel Zoe and at Climbing in Heels Pod on Instagram. For more updates and upcoming guest episodes and all things Curator, I will see you next week. Mwah.